welcome back to my channel. So today's case is the case of Timothy Pitson. Timothy's case is a very interesting and different one. I had actually never heard of this until a couple of months ago. This is one of those cases that has baffled everyone and we're all just kind of sitting and waiting to see what happens and you guys will understand what I mean in a little bit. Timothy disappeared from Aurora, Illinois on May 11th, 2011. Timothy's father, Jim, dropped him off early in the morning at Greenman Elementary School. A few hours later, he showed back up to take Timothy to daycare only to find out that his wife, Amy Fry Pitson, had checked Timothy out around 8.30 that morning, so only about an hour after Jim dropped him off. Now, this wasn't too alarming at first. He figured there must have been a reason. So he decided to check at home to see if maybe he had come home sick, something had happened. But when he got there, neither Amy or Timothy were there. So that's when he decided to call his wife and she didn't answer at all. He decided next to go to her work to maybe see if they knew anything, and Amy had not shown up for work that day either. He started to get a little bit panicky, but he decided to keep as calm as he could and called her parents next. Now neither of them knew where she was either, so then he began frantically calling Amy and still received no answer. They had a very rocky relationship, which I will get into in a little bit, but because of this, Jim was under the impression that Amy was upset at him about something. He went to bed that night and expected them to be back in the morning. He figured she needed a little bit of room for a breather and when she was ready to talk, she would come back. The next morning, he woke and waited around for a little bit, called a couple of times, still no answer, and that's when he realized it was much more than her just being angry. So he filed both Timothy and Amy as missing persons. He still thought she was angry, but he was worried she had taken it maybe a little bit too far this time and tried to run off with their son. Not permanently, but he figured the police would be searching for her as long as he put in a missing persons report and it was better safe than sorry. Two days later, Amy ended up calling her mother and she told her mother, I'm fine, I'm safe, and so is Timothy. I just need to figure out what's going on, figure out what I wanna do about the situation, and then I'll be home. Now, I don't know if she was incredibly specific about the situation she was talking about, but since I'm getting the vibe that this happened somewhat frequently where they got into arguments a lot, and again, I'll speak more on that in a little bit, this wasn't really alarming for anyone. And then instead of calling her husband, she then calls her husband's brother and says something that scares Jim a lot. She tells his brother that she's fine, Timothy is safe, and Timothy belongs to her. This is something very strange to say. Jim says this has stuck out in his mind ever since. So quickly, I'm going to go into Jim and Amy's background. Jim and Amy had met at a party and dated long distance for about a year. But when they met, Amy was going through severe depression. She had recently gone through a divorce with her first husband. And while she had never had issues with depression before, the divorce seemed to trigger it, and Jim and Amy decided to work together. He figured she would, you know, kind of mend herself, and they would work together to get her in a better place, and everything would be fine. He kept his hopes very, very high for her and supported her all at the same time. However, that's not exactly how it happened. They had fights all the time. She was sad all the time, caused her to get angry over really small things. They fought about money. Um, it was just not the most healthy marriage and he thought he could battle through this depression but unfortunately he was kind of helpless in the situation and I, I think that's how a lot of people view mental health. You think you can fix someone instead of kind of working around them and when you realize you can't fix them it becomes a stressor for both parties. But then Timothy was born and Timothy was the absolute light of her life. She changed drastically after she had him. It was like she had a reason to live. She had a reason to be happy. He was a sweet little boy. He was a mama's boy like no other. And things seemed to be going well for quite a long time. But then as depression works, it slowly crept back up on her and took hold of her yet again. 
She had threatened Jim with a divorce at one point, and then a little bit further down the road, Jim actually found out that she had reconnected with her ex-husband. And when he found this out, he confronted Amy and said, I'm going to take custody of our son, and you can go and do what you want if you want to. And Timothy was one of the only things in her life making her incredibly happy and probably saving her from her depression. And little did Jim know, this was also one of her largest fears, was having Timothy taken away from her. When you have a mental illness, there's always this fear in the back of your mind that people are going to assume you are incapable as a parent. And this fear exists, and it was one of Amy's largest ones. She decided to stay with the family, and they kind of just trucked along, but I don't think they made much positive progress in their relationship. So this is why no one was really panicking at first. She tended to have these moments where she got very upset if she was in a depressive state. She would get mad over the small things again, and he figured that's just what it was. Her family figured it's nothing more than this. Then three days after both Amy and Timothy disappeared, Jim got a knock on the door from police, and he assumed it was going to be good news, and instead was shocked at the fact that Amy was found deceased in the Rockford Inn by her own doing. And Timothy was not with her. The only thing she had in the room with her was a bottle of water, a bottle of children's cough syrup, and a flyer from Kalahari Resort. She had double locked the door, secured the chain, and left her car parked out in the parking lot. Now, as if dealing with your wife's suicide isn't horrible enough, he also now had to figure out where his son was, and the whole entire family on both sides were just an absolute wreck. Police dug in deeper to try to figure out their last steps, a few days before the suicide, to hopefully locate where Timothy was. When they started piecing together the puzzle, it didn't give them answers like they thought. It actually kind of made things a lot more confusing. She picked him up from school that morning at around 8.30, claiming there was a family emergency. And they immediately drove east to the Brookfield Zoo, which is kind of near Chicago. From there, they beelined it straight up north to the Key Lime Cove Water Resort, where they checked in on May 11th at 3.50 p.m. They checked out the next morning and then made another drive north west to the Kalahari Resort in Wisconsin, where they checked in on May 12th the following day at 3.40 p.m. They had surveillance from both of these areas and nothing seemed awry. Timothy appeared to be in good spirits. He was playing with his different trains and things on the floor. Amy didn't seem to be upset or nervous. You know, certain things you would expect to see from a mother about to take their own life. The next day on the 13th, they checked out of the Kalahari Resort at 10.10 a.m. and this is where things get even stranger. They beelined it south, sometime between 12 and 1.30 p.m. And I'm assuming based on the fact that it takes about three hours to get from Kalahari to the Sterling and Rock Falls area that they got there at about 1 p.m. But at 1 p.m. calls were made from this particular area to her family. The same phone calls that I talked about before where she called her mom, she called her husband's brother, and in one of those phone calls, we know for a fact Timothy was present because I'm not sure and I can't figure out why no one can confirm this, but either someone heard him in the background, but it's also possible according to police that one of them actually spoke to him. Not sure why that's not been confirmed, but we do know for sure he was alive in the Sterling Rock Falls area of Illinois on the 13th of May at around 1 p.m. They aren't seen again until 8 p.m. when Amy walks into to a Sullivan's food grocery store in Winnebago. And this time, Timothy was not with her. She doesn't appear anxious or in any sort of distress, and she just buys milk and crackers and then leaves. Now, she doesn't show up again till 11.15 when she checks into the Rockford Inn. She was seen at eight, just 20 minutes down the road, but it takes three hours to check into the Rockford Inn and again, Timothy is not with her, and this inn is where she would stay and be found the next morning deceased. They found a note on the table where she apologized for the mess she made, and she said that Timothy was safe with people that loved him. Now, she also sent letters to her mother in the mail, her husband, and her best friend, and all of them essentially said the same thing. 
They said Timothy was with someone who loved him, he was safe, he would never be found, and there was nothing anyone could have ever done to stop her or change her mind. The clothes that Amy had been seen in in the grocery store were not the same clothes she was wearing when her body was found, and they have not been able to locate them anywhere. They then found out, thanks to her iPass, which is just a quick pass you use when you were on toll roads, which were the roads she took to get to all these places, that she'd actually made this trip two other times in the months before. She had gone to the area the night of February 18th and the morning of March 20th. And she had no reason, according to everyone who knew her, family and friends, to be in these locations, which told police this entire thing was strategically planned, which made everyone terrified they really would never find Timothy. Despite the notes leading everyone to believe that Timothy was alive, we cannot 100% for certain say that he is. There is still a possibility that she killed him along with herself. You see a lot of the times when mothers are suffering from depression or suicidal thoughts that they think the best place for their children to be is with them. So when they go, they take their children with them. However, specialists have gone through this with her husband and they say the most likely scenario when this does happen is that the child will be with the mother. It's all about being together. So you don't commonly see a mother take their child somewhere else, murder them, do something with their body, and then go a different location, possibly a day later, a couple days later, and then take their own life. That's not the most common when it comes to those types of scenarios. Jim and the entire family as well say there is absolutely no way Amy would ever do anything to Timothy. While she had struggled with depression and she had had a suicide attempt at least one time before, her son was everything. They looked through different records and they found that she had bought Timothy clothes and quite a few toys the day before her body was discovered. But none of these items were found. They searched her car that they found in the parking lot. His car seat wasn't in it. The Spider-Man book bag he left with was not in it. However, this was good for police because they believed if all of his items were gone, including possibly his car seat, he really was with someone else. Meaning at one point or another, someone would more more than likely come forward and bring him home. When they saw that he was a loved little boy, he had a family waiting for him, whoever she convinced to take him might realize, wow, I made a mistake. But this isn't exactly how things would unfold. We just want him home and we want him home safe. That's For Jim Pitson of Aurora, Illinois, the past week right. without his son Timothy has been filled with questions and concerns. Timothy hasn't been seen or heard from since Friday. I know we're gonna find him alive. I just, I just know we, we are, so I, I don't know why she did what she did. The Aurora Police Department is leading the search for Timothy, but as of today, the FBI, the U.S. Marshal's Office, as well as a group from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children are also in town helping out. All I want to know is that he's safe and that nobody's hurt him. Family, friends, and police are handing out flyers. Jim doesn't know why someone hasn't come forward yet, but he's pleading to get his son back. Please, please just... Take him to the police station, drop him off the hospital, anything, just, just call the police. Police did an insane forensic examination on her vehicle, and I think it's so fascinating the information they were able to gather from just taking samples of underneath of her bumper. They found that at some point during the trip, she had gone from a secondary blacktop road onto a gravel road, and then she possibly backed up into a field. I don't think she drove all the way into a field because it was just under her back bumper. I don't know if she backed up to turn around or if she purposely backed up to a field so no one would see the trunk of her car. But they took all of these little bits of dirt and grass to try to narrow down where this exactly happened. At this point, police are assuming there was some sort of handoff of Timothy. And what better place to do it than on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere where no one would see you in a field. They found that the road at one point had been treated with glass marking beads. There would be birch and oak trees in the general area, but not right on the road. So it was a fairly open field with those trees somewhere in the distance. There would also be Queen Anne's lace and black mustard plants growing alongside the road. 
The grass had not been cut, leading police to think that this was not a residential area, and they tested, and it had never been used as farmland before, and there's a possibility that there's a small pond or river nearby. I think it's absolutely incredible that they were able to find that much information out, and it helped so much they thought in the search. From the information, they narrowed down all the different possibilities, and they believed that Lee County and Whiteside County were the most possible counties this switch off occurred in. But they don't want to roll out Carroll County, Ogle County, Stevenson County, and Winnebago County because, again, all these counties were on her route. Despite extensive searches in this area, and yes, they were at this point searching for a body just in case, and also items that did belong to Timothy since he didn't leave any behind, they found nothing. They searched a ton of different areas and they truly thought there would be some clue, but she managed to leave nothing behind. 70 investigators spent five hours today searching for six-year-old Timothy Pitson. 12 News' Mike Anderson reports from Dixon, Illinois, where the search came up empty. Aurora Police Department is heading up the investigation, but they have moved their command post here to Dixon, Illinois. This is the last place the mother and son were heard from while they were together after they left Wisconsin. Friday morning, she checked out of the Dells Water Park, drove to this area of Illinois. The search for six-year-old Timothy Pitson has shifted to the Dixon Sterling Rock Falls areas as investigators concentrate on the location or locations from which his mother, Amy, made several cell phone calls last Friday before she left him with someone then checked herself into a motel in Rockford and killed herself. Amy's phone was found on the side of the road about an hour west of Rockford Inn, which wouldn't really be a route she would have taken. I will put up a map here of what I'm thinking she did. Now, I am not a professional. I have no idea. This is just my guess. She drove from her home. She drove over to the zoo drove up north to Key Lime Cove, up northwest a little bit more to Kalahari, but then she kind of beelines all the way south to an area where she never really did anything other than call people, and then she made this strange loop up northwest to drop her phone off, and it would have been about five hours, again, rough estimates, until she got to the Rockford Inn, which is only an hour away. So she had a good chunk of time where she just was in this area. They found out that the car seat had actually been taken by the maternal grandmother just the week before and she was looked into as a suspect. Or she had just borrowed it to take care of Timothy and forgot to give it back after she dropped him back off at home. So she was able to be ruled out. The FBI also decided to join in the hunt for Timothy and they were hitting just as many dead ends as local police were. They started to compile a list of all of Amy's acquaintances and family and questioned as many as they possibly could because if she had put him with someone that she trusted that would take care of him, one of those people would probably be the ones that had Timothy. They also looked into all the websites that Amy had been visiting in the days prior. They checked her phone records, her laptop, at home and at work and all of her emails and oddly enough nothing at all was found. She didn't seem to be planning for this trip, at least not in a way that left a trail. She hadn't even been in contact with anyone at all other than her husband in the days before they disappeared. She had also just the weekend before gone on an annual vacation with one of her very best friends and this friend said she wasn't acting out of character or odd at all. So she seemed at this point very set on her decision. She had obviously planned it for so long that there was no need to double check anything and the weeks before doing it, she did everything perfectly, which is probably why Timothy has yet to be found. Now this is where everyone's just kind of sitting and waiting because no one really knows what to do. She left no clues behind. So far, every person they've questioned has led them to dead ends. I don't think there has been any suspect or even person of interest named in the case. There's only two theories here. He either was given to someone who still has him, and I'm pretty sure he would be 12 at this point, or she didn't really give him to anyone. Maybe she took his life as well and just hid him so well that no one 
could possibly find him. As I said before, when it comes to someone having him in their custody, that is a long time to hide a child that has been desperately searched for. The FBI has been in on it, it has received national news coverage, it's huge. And while there have been many sightings, every single one of them has turned out to not be Timothy. You know, if she put Timothy in the hands of someone that she trusted, I am sure she had a whole entire list of her wishes and commands that she left behind before she decided to end her life. I do not think if she wanted him to be happy and loved him as much as everyone says, that she would allow him to be locked up in someone's house, hidden from everyone forever. But at the same time, I think her and her husband's situation might have a lot to do with this case. Her biggest fear, as we said before, was having her son taken away from her and everyone judging her ability to parent off of her mental illness. Jim gave her an ultimatum probably from her worst nightmare. A, having her son taken away and her thinking she couldn't do anything about it because he would probably bring up that she was mentally unstable and B, being told to choose between that and someone that she so obviously loved and made such a huge impact in her life, which was her first husband. I think she never got rid of this. I don't think this ever left the very front of her mind and I think she started building a lot of resentment towards Jim. I don't think he ever meant to bring her a lot of emotional harm, but I don't think he really realized, especially as a mother with postpartum depression and other mental illnesses, how incredibly triggering it can be to give someone an ultimatum like that. And I think her resentment just built and built. They continued being unhappy together. I don't know if the ex-husband has been looked into, I am sure he has, or anyone of his relatives. I just, I don't know. I don't even know where to start when it comes to this case. He wouldn't even give the child to her own mother. To me, that says she did not want Jim having anything to do with Timothy. I think he had held Timothy over her head at one point and she had struggled so much with her depression that she felt the need to end her life. She wanted to make sure Jim didn't win. She wanted to hang Timothy over his head like he had tortured her with. And you know, again, this is all speculation. It's just very possible she did all this to get Jim back. Didn't even call him in her list of people that she contacted before she died. And that says a lot to me. If she did give Timothy to someone, I don't know who she would have given him to. And she would have had to really manipulate this person. And this person would have had to have disliked Jim more than likely because anyone in their right mind would not watch a father suffer from not only losing his wife but also his child without coming forward. And at this point he would be reaching an age where he probably will see things about himself. And I will say unfortunately I've personally witnessed circumstances like this happen where one parent manipulates the child so much into thinking the other parent is so terrible without it being factual and the child is so scared and set in their mind that this parent is just the worst that they never try to go find out for themselves and that could be another situation we're dealing with a lot of people think oh he'll come home when he's old enough but what if he has been brainwashed since he left he was six years old while he was old enough to understand a lot that's still so young and easily moldable to me either whatever she told these people that might have Timothy has them so set on never letting Timothy go back to Jim and any of that family because they will give him back to Jim or these people don't exist. So then you have to think of the possibility that she killed Timothy as well. Now I said it's not very common for a mother planning on ending her own life to end her child's life somewhere else and separate the two. It kind of defeats the whole train of thought and purpose in their minds. Again, not completely unlikely, but it's not very common. One thing I, that kind of stuck out to me is the fact that she had child's cough medicine. Now, if she took some first, maybe, to numb out the pain she was going to cause herself while ending her life, I would see that. But I don't know if she did. And call me absolutely 
crazy, but I feel like maybe it could have been planted there as like a tip because it's so insignificant that people probably wouldn't look into it. But the flyer that she had with her was the last place she went with her son. She had children's cough syrup and then just a bottle of water. I don't know. Again, call me crazy. I've said some crazy theories before, but I think it's very possible that cough syrup was maybe a hint. If she had ended his life, it's very easy to overdose your child, especially on something like cough syrup. So that could potentially be how she ended his life if she did. She just brought nothing into the hotel room. So I find her choice of items to be very interesting and they were significant for some reason. Then you have to think about the fact that she was seen 20 minutes away from the Rockford Inn at 8 p.m. but she didn't show up to the inn until 11, meaning she had three hours where she was doing something. In that three hours, she had some reason to change and get rid of her clothes. I think it's very possible she buried her son somewhere with the clothes she was wearing so that when her body was found, there would be no evidence that anything had happened to Timothy. It's three hours, she could have easily driven somewhere and buried him in some sort of field. They could be looking at where the last phone calls were made because she, in my opinion, probably ditched the phone before she did anything with Timothy so that it couldn't be tracked anywhere. But she could have been driving in those circles all the way to the west to throw everybody off. Everyone could be looking over there when really she drove him all the way to Rockford and that's where she did something to him. They were walking around in fields looking for a body, but you have to keep in mind this wouldn't have been just a stranger that murdered someone and was dumping a body. This would have been a mother that would want to bury her son. If she had done something to him because she loved him and because she wanted them to be together forever, which is a common theme you see when things like this happen, she would want to lay him to rest so they could meet each other on the other side. I don't know if they're religious, but it's a very common practice for people who even are not religious. I think it's very possible that all of his belongings haven't been found because she wanted him to be with all of his favorite things. We see this as her last to raw this trip, but it very well could have been his as well. It was all based on making him happy and buying him things, his favorite toys, new clothing. And it looked like she was setting him up to go somewhere, but she also could have been giving him the best last days of his life. And I hate to say it that way, but I think it's very, very possible. He could be buried somewhere and not be found for years because again, most of the time when people find bodies, they've just been dumped somewhere, but it's not that type of situation here at all. The clothes weren't found, why? Why weren't they found? Where, what would her reasoning have been to get rid of clothes if she knew her body would be found and he was in a safe place. I'm sorry, but I just, I'm so concerned that she's leading everyone in the wrong direction. Timothy would be in middle school by now and the investigator honestly believes that he is out there somewhere alive and it's just going to take a matter of time for him to show up. There is one particular case, I can't remember exactly what it was, where this young boy went missing and he showed up later as an adult and I don't think he even knew who was missing and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's very, very likely that it will be one of those situations. Maybe he's not coming forward because he just doesn't remember who he is. I think my very first memory is around the age he was when he disappeared. So at this point, he honestly might not remember anything that happened. He might not remember who he really is if he's been called by some other name and told these people taking care of him or his parents. There's really no telling in this case and it really is just a sit and wait. He either comes forward or some tip comes in that leads them to the correct place of where his body was buried. He was last seen with a Spider-Man backpack, several toys, and his mother had bought him a new tube of toothpaste. Timothy knew his phone number, he knew his address, he knew the directions to his grandparents' house. So if he wanted to get in contact with him, if he hasn't forgotten, he very well could. 
Police are still currently trying to take samples of all these different locations that could possibly be where the car backed up at, hoping that one day they will eventually stumble across a perfect match, which will give them the exact location that they need to search. His family has planted trees on his birthday, gotten him cards, made him cakes, and the elementary school has even made him a little garden. Nobody in the area can forget what happened to Timothy and everyone is still hanging on to the hope that one day he will come home. His father said the day he comes home will be the happiest day of his entire life. I personally hope Timothy at one point or another, hopefully in the next couple of years, comes forward and tells people who he is and what happened to him. I think there is a high possibility. However, I think there's certain bits of information that really push me towards Amy ending his life as well. And the amount of anger she kind of seemed to have towards her husband and the spitefulness and she just seemed to be suffering with this just silent resentment and anger and depression all mixed into one and a lot of things can come out of that a whole lot of things and despite the fact that everyone thinks she would never hurt her son someone suffering with mental illness you just don't know you don't know what they would do so i'm interested to see what happens i'm hoping this is answered in the next couple of years if you guys happen to spot him i will put up a picture right here and i've probably put it up a few other times in this video of a sketch of what he might possibly look like now just keep your eyes out especially if you are in these particular areas thank you guys so much for watching as always don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button to become a part of the Helen fam, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Near, 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 near. Who's knocking on my tail? Near, 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 I just assumed I'd play the part of keeping you in the right direction. your foundation and I say hey you just let it go your struggles won't